I'm Kimberly from Fat Quarter Shop, and I'm back with another shortcut quilt. You're gonna love this one. All you need is one layer cake and four mini charm packs. You're gonna have very little waste, and today's pattern is called Mini Cake Mints. You're gonna love it. So we're using the Red Barn Christmas fabric, and we've got one layer cake, four mini charm packs, and of course, if you didn't have four mini charm packs, you could use one charm pack. You can download the free pattern at Fat Quarter Shop and page one is gonna be our lap size and we're gonna have extra size options behind that. This is a very beginner quilt. This is gonna be the hardest part of the quilt, which is so easy. And today we're gonna to be using two creative grid rulers to make this easier. We're gonna use CGR8, which is just an eight and a half inch square ruler. And we're gonna use the CGR212, which is gonna help us cut up some of our layer cakes. So you're gonna see just how easy this quilt is when we get started. We're gonna start playing with our layer cakes. So we're just gonna set our mini charm packs to the side. We're gonna use all of those and we're gonna take apart our layer cake. And with your layer cake, you only need 38 of the squares. So the first thing that I like to do anytime I'm working with a layer cake is I'm gonna first just take out the duplicates because that'll just make it easier when I pick my final pieces that I'm going to use. So I just take all the duplicates out. Now we'll end up using some of the duplicates, but that's just kind of how I start any project. I love this fabric. It's got this rustic farmhouse look, which totally matches my house. So we're gonna get all these duplicates out. Now, of course, you don't have to do it this way, but this is just what I do. I also think by doing this, it lets you kind of fan through your fabric and get a feel for what you do have. So I'm gonna set these aside. I might come back to them. And you're gonna see that we're gonna cut 24 10 inch squares one way, and then we're gonna cut 14 10 inch squares another. I'm just gonna randomly start putting these in stacks. And I'm just kind of dividing the colors evenly. It's very scrappy and a lot of tiny prints, so it's, you're not gonna really notice. I'm gonna leave a couple of these out and see. And so like this one, the red is over here, so I'll put the green over here. It's really scrappy, so you really don't have to do that. That's just kind of me. Like since this one's over here, I'm putting this one over here. That's just kind of my personality. Kind of mix it up in the end. I don't think it really matters. So on one of these stacks, I only need 14. So I want to kind of get that one going first. And I want to have enough fabric from all the colors in that stack of 14. So this is 14. So I'm going to just make sure it's 14 and set this aside. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So these are gonna be my fabric Bs. So I'm gonna put the fabric B marker on there. That's my alphabet, and I'm gonna set that aside. And we'll come back to that. Now from this one, we need 24 10 inch squares. So let's see where we're at. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So now I have a couple of duplicates in here. So since this is duplicate, I'll probably take that out and add that and it doesn't look like I have any other duplicates. When I have a white on white and a layer cake, I tend to just save that. So if I need a background later for another quilt, like for a star to pop out, I'm gonna just keep that for another project. And I'll put these in my scrap bin. And these will be our fabric A's. So I have my A's and my B's, and these are also gonna be my fabric B's. 
So let's start cutting our fabric A's. Your fabric A, you just need 24 eight and a half inch squares. So you're gonna cut all of these down to eight and a half. On this quilt, you wanna make sure you do not starch or pre-wash because your fabric will shrink too much and this pattern just won't work for that. So what I'll probably do is use my rotating mat and I'll probably stack four at a time. And since they came straight out of a layer cake, you don't need to iron them because they're gonna be pretty flat. Now, if you started with a fat quarter bundle, you're gonna have creases and you will want to cut that out. So from here, I'm just gonna use this square Creative Grids ruler. It's the exact size I need. And I will cut two sides. And then you just keep going. We're gonna make 24 of these. So I'm just gonna set these aside. This is my favorite cutting mat. It's the Kimberly Cuts cutting mat. And we have two sizes and I love it because it's aqua because you know everything in your sewing room should be cute. I am cutting through four layers on this. It would be great to start out with a brand new rotary cutter so that when you're going through your fabrics, you get a nice clean cut. And I prefer to use Ulfa Endurance Blades since I feel that they are stronger. Now on this last cut, I'm gonna put eight together just so you can see what happens if you cut eight. Sometimes it'll work, sometimes it won't, but it's gonna take more force. So you're gonna have to really press. And you can get, this can be your cardio for the day, right here. This is about as much cardio as I get, right here. And it will work. You just have to put a little bit more into it. Now, all of this, you could um, save, put it in a jar as decoration, and it'd be really cute, you know, just to put in your living room, like in a little mason jar. These are too small for me to sew with, so I am going to um, probably not save these because this is not an inch and a half. So that's about as much as I save. But if you cut these all into strips and put them in a little jar, it would be so cute. put this out during Christmas time. It's pretty cute and you could put some buttons too and that would make it cute but that's a way to kind of display your scraps. You can even pull them out of the top. So that's what we're going to do with those scraps. I'm going to label everything a fabric A and we're going to move to cutting fabric B. So for fabric B these are already pre-cut these mini charm packs. So those are going to be fabric B's. We're going to take the 14 leftover layer cakes and we're gonna cut each of them into 16 two and a half inch squares. So I'm gonna do one first, just to show you how to do it, and then we'll see if layering works. So when you're cutting with the layer cake, you want to consider the very tip of the layer cake as the edge. So when you see these little jagged lines, the jagged line is your edge. So I'm gonna cut four strips, two and a half, and that's why I like this ruler. I'm gonna put all the strips back together in a second, but this is a two and a half inch strip, so you don't have to think. And I am notorious for cutting two and a quarter inches wide instead of two and a half, so this ruler will save me. On this last strip, I'm gonna just trim just in case. Sometimes the layer cakes are a tiny bit bigger and you can see this one is a little bit bigger. So just trim that off. Now what you can do here is just put your fabric back together and as long as it's flush, it should be fine. And then put the top of your ruler at the top 
I'm just going to trim a tiny bit off. And then we're going to do the same thing the other way. And that's going to give you 16 two and a half inch squares from each layer cake. So there's four. And as you are moving to the next piece, if you pull your ruler up and not to the side, your fabric won't move. If you move your ruler without pulling it up first, everything's gonna move. So pull your ruler up. And then if they move, just move them back. Oops, well that didn't work. So from here, I'm just gonna cut these into little two and a half inch squares. And you can see the layer cake was about a sixteenth of an inch too big, and that's okay. I'm just going to trim that little piece off. So you need to do this on 14 of your layer cake squares. So as I cut, I'm just going to move my items to my design board and just keep cutting. So with these, I'll probably stack a couple and I'm gonna cut all of these the same exact way, but as I stack my layer cakes, I'm gonna make sure that all edges are lined up. So I'll probably do the same thing as before where I cut four at a time, and I'm just gonna do that real quick. So this is probably actually the hardest part of the whole quilt because piecing it is so easy. So I'm going to get an extra design board and we're going to start laying out our block and our block is going to consist of all of these 224 squares that we just cut plus the four mini charm packs and we're going to make 24 blocks but what I like to do is they're going to be four by four so I am just going to randomly pull different colors and try to have a mix of different colors, different designs. Now this quilt is totally scrappy, so in the end, you're gonna have fabrics that touch. There's kind of no way around it. So if I was making this quilt at home, I would probably just do a big stack of all of them, all 24. But for this, I'm just gonna do one. So from here, I'm gonna go ahead and open one of these mini charms. And these are already two and a half inch square, so I'm not going to trim them up or anything. And if they're like an eighth of an inch too big, I think that's fine. It'll all work itself out. And like I said, stuff is going to end up touching. So if, if you end up having duplicates in the same block, that's going to happen. I think it's inevitable. So I kind of have a good mix here. The only thing that's sticking out is there's a diagonal here of white. So that's kind of sticking out to me. One thing that's really good is if you put this on a board and walk away, walk about four feet away. And if there is an obvious something that sticks out, it's gonna stick out there. You'll see it. So I'm gonna kind of move. I'm just gonna kind of move around until And I'd probably like, to be honest, when I'm making this at home, I'll probably be super picky on the first couple and then by the end, they'll just be so scrappy, I won't even look at them. So that's a good mix. What I'm gonna do now is teach you chain piecing. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the sewing machine and we're gonna chain piece down here. That means I'm gonna leave the thread in. I'm not gonna cut it. 
I'm not gonna iron, but I'm gonna go back and we're gonna add this as the third chain. And I'm gonna show you how to chain piece this whole block in less than two minutes. So I have a quarter inch foot on my machine. I don't even think I'm gonna pin today. I think I'm just gonna put my fabrics right sides together. And you can see here that this has a straight edge and then this one came straight out of the mini charm pack. You just consider the tip of the edge as your edge and you're just gonna stitch straight down the seam with a quarter inch seam. I'm gonna leave a couple of stitches in between so that I've got some room, some jiggle room if I need it. Just keep going. Now I consider this one big piece that's chained together. I'm gonna put it on my design board. And then from here, I'm gonna pull this whole chain down and I'm just gonna add and just keep sewing just like I just did. And you can see that between my pieces, I've got a little bit of room because I left a couple of stitches. And you just keep adding. Then bring this back to your design board, open it back up, and then we're just gonna add this last row. And of course, this is scrappy, so if you get it out of order, it really doesn't matter. You're gonna have fabrics and colors that touch. It's kind of inevitable. And we have our block all chain piece together and we're gonna go iron. So I'm gonna start ironing from this end, not this end, because if I start ironing over here, I think I will chop off um, some of the seams or make it kind of bumpy. So I'll start at the very bottom, set my seam, which just means pressing your seams flat. That kind of locks your stitches in. I'm gonna press all of the first row one way, and then I'm gonna come back and press this one this way. And you notice I'm not setting all my seams, and that is because I think this is gonna come out easier than what I was originally thinking. So just press each another way. And you can see here that some of these mini charm packs are not the same size. So it looks like this mini charm pack is bigger than what I cut. But with this quilt, it's not going to matter because I'm going to show you when we're finished with the block how to make it work. And this one's just scrappy and it's just straight square so it will all work out in the end. But honestly, since this just touches our fabric A, which is our larger square, you can press any way you like. From here, what I will do is I'm going to pin these two together and these two together real quick. And I just take the left seam and move it towards the right and it will lock. It'll just stop because I've pressed them two different directions. So I'm just gonna keep pinning all the way down so move it kind of to the left, move it to the right, and it'll just stop. And you can feel it, like when you do this, you can feel when it's locked in. So I'll just turn it around and do the other side the same way. And 
you can see right here that this is not exactly even across because it looks like this mini charm pack was a little bit bigger. Just leave it and um, it'll all work out. We're gonna go to the sewing machine. We're gonna stitch these two seams. We're gonna open this back up, pin this one and stitch here and then we will come back and iron. Now I slide my pin out right before I get to it instead of sewing over it. And just rotate. Now from here, I just open this up, put it right sides together, pin just like we did, and sew your last seam for this block. I'm going to just set the seam on the bottom and I'm just going to press all one direction and again on this it doesn't matter which direction you press because of the block next to it. Now I know that I was pinning all of those seams and I'm just curious are you team pinning or are you team unpinning? I would love for you to comment and let me know. When you're done ironing just turn your block over make sure your back um, is nice and flat. So from here, what I like to do because I'm using pre-cuts is put this Creative Grids CGR8 ruler on here, which is the size the block needs to be. Cut four sides. And any of that extra stuff that was on that mini charm pack is gonna come right off. And you're gonna make 24 of these blocks. For the layout of your quilt, just follow your diagram on your free pattern it's going to be six across by eight down, and you're just going to be alternating your fabric A squares and your mini cake mince blocks. This is going to give you a real gingham look to your quilt. This pattern works really well with fabrics that have a very small scale print. And you can see that we did not pay attention to the direction of the prints. All the houses are going different ways. So just have fun and build you a gingham quilt. Download your mini cake mints at Fat Quarter Shop. I can't wait to see the quilts that you create. And like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>